Voters in France head to the polls on Sunday to choose their next president. After a spate of attacks, the country is on high alert and security a big concern. How much will it influence then the people's choice at the ballot box? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Sami Zaydan. French voters go to the polls on Sunday to elect a new president in what's being described as the most uncertain election ever in French politics. And the world is watching because this election will not only have an impact within France, but beyond its borders. Now here's why. Well, France is the second largest economy in the Eurozone and one of the seven biggest across the world. A couple of candidates have already talked about a Frexit, leaving the European Union. And not just that, this election takes place at a time when the French people are increasingly worried about security after several attacks across the country. Well, the latest taking place on Thursday during the candidates' final TV debate. Could this latest incident help swing the pendulum in favour of the far-right candidate Marine Le Pen? Will the popular nationalist fervour sweeping other countries around the globe take hold in France. Far-right candidate Marine Le Pen has kept the National Front strong anti-immigrant views. She wants France out of Europe and has been critical of the country's large Muslim population. Republican Francois Fillon was the front runner, but his campaign has been dogged by claims he used state funds to pay his wife and children for jobs they didn't do. He favours cuts to public spending. He's also pushing for mosques to be monitored. Fion's troubles have boosted newcomer and centrist Emmanuel Macron. He's a fierce defender of open immigration and supports the European Union. And then there's Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who left the Socialists to start his own far-left party. He's critical of NATO and is promising to reform the EU. Let's bring our guests into the show. We have in Paris Jacques Reland, a senior research fellow at the Global Policy Institute. In London, Olivier Guita security and political risk analyst and the managing director of Global Strat. And also in Paris, Nathalie Goulet, senator representing Or Normandie in France. Good to have you all. Let's start, if we may, with Jacques. Is security now the top issue in this election? It was not during the campaign, but it has become the top issue in the last few days, following the revelation that an attempt, a potential attack against uh, candidates uh, could happen before the election and some people were arrested in Marseille a few days ago and obviously the events of last night the announcement at the time in television when on television when all the candidates were answering questions about their program suddenly that with many viewers that brought the issue to the fore of the campaign in the last few days. All in, right. in the last few Let days, I, the campaign stops tonight officially. Uh, so it could be, and uh, many people think that it might be a game changer, or at least it will have some impact, at least on uh, the voting. On okay, so that, that's a good point and a good time for me to transition into Natalie. So the picture's changing, Jacques says there. Do you think by the time the voters go to those polls, it's going to be about security, economy, unemployment, all of those issues will be taking a back seat. Well, you know, those issues should have been um, head of the scale. Unfortunately, the affairs um, went on and then uh, we didn't have a real campaign on the basis, but, uh, you know, the fight against terrorism was uh, always in the air. I mean, it's not a blend new, but it took the new um, way by the attack of yesterday, of course. Let's bring Olivia into it. From a security perspective, France, of course, has witnessed a number of attacks. Does the latest one in any way, Olivia, change or add anything new to the security challenge France is facing? No, not really, because if you, if you look at the number of attacks that French security services have foiled since the beginning of the year, we're talking about seven in just three months. So the amount of... Uh, potential terrorist attacks that, that are uh, facing France has gone uh, 
really up since uh, January 2015. And we have now a situation where France is at the top of the food chain, if you will, of jihadist groups. And uh, it's far from a surprise for many people uh, within the country that unfortunately this happened last night. So far from a surprise. Let me go back to Natalie. Do you agree with that then? Why are we thinking that this will be the top issue? Will it impact people really when they go to the polls if people are becoming used to the fact that unfortunately there are attacks like no, this? We, no, may I tell you something? We are never, we are never ready and we, 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 we are not uh, used to terrorism and we always want to fight it. But at the same time, our intelligence services were absolutely aware and told everybody, including the press, that uh, this election uh, was also a question of, with a high level of insecurity and threat. So uh, somebody were expecting something. We were expecting something, except that yesterday was absolutely unpredictable. We didn't know where and who. But uh, we are still on the state, uh, under a state of emergency, may I remind you. So re this question of uh, security was always um, in the air. I mean, even the people were not talking about it. But during the uh, different speeches, we, we had this issue all the time. OK, then I guess the question is, Jacques, are we going to see security concerns translate into increased support for the right wing of French politics? What do you think, Jacques? That's what, what, what one would assume at the time, because you think that people like uh, Le Pen and especially uh, François Fillon have made the issue of uh, terrorism, especially Islam, Muslim, Islamist terrorism, the top issue for them. Let's not forget that François Fillon wrote a book about uh, uh, Islam terrorism. And uh, therefore, for him, it could be an opportunity to bring that back to bring uh, the fact that he has focused on that issue, which was not actually dealt with that much during the campaign, as was said earlier, because people have now, you could say, they have now become accustomed. At the same time, terrorism, we know that we'll have to live with it. We know that terrorism can strike anywhere. We've seen it striking in, uh, in, uh, in Sweden, we've seen it striking in, in England, in Germany, everywhere. And most of the time, last time, it's been the, due to some lone wolves rather than big, uh, well-organized attacks, such as the one on Charlie Hebdo and the Bataclan a couple of years ago. John, so John, if you let me jump time, in here. You the used the expression that as one would think that a rise in security concerns would mean more support from the right wing. And, and it's interesting you use that that word one would think so or that's what we would think but there are polls that say that after the Paris attack in November 2015 or after the Bastille attack in July 2016 there was not an increase in support for the National Front leader in the polls. Let me take that point to uh, back to Natalie and say how certain are some of these assumptions which are being made? Well you know Marine Le Pen is, serving, is, is surfing on the wave and so is, uh, is François Fillon, because uh, she has been uh, working on this issue and, and she has been pleading and pleading um, uh, this uh, hell of Islamophobia for such a long time. So now she, she looks right. And uh, so uh, she did a, a very strong speech uh, this morning. And uh, it was very scary for, for the Republican and for the people who love the democracy and uh, multiculturalism. But at the same time, um, you know, it's something that the people want to listen to. Mm -hmm. And you also have to face that uh, uh, now the, the French population, most part of them are really scared. And uh, they are listening very carefully what uh, Marine Le Pen is saying, unfortunately. Okay. People are scared. Perhaps a good uh, time to ask Olivia the question, Will security uh, be stepped up? Is it going to look any different now for Sunday? Uh, will fear of those attacks, the, 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 the scared uh, scenario that Natalie's pointing out there, is it going to dampen voter turnout, do you think? I don't think so. I mean, looking first at uh, your point regarding the, the security to, to be stepped up, uh, it has already been stepped up to the max level. We're talking about 50,000 soldiers and police uh, put on the streets of France in, in the past two weeks. Uh, in the run-up to those elections. So there's not much that the state can do to protect uh, people from uh, terror attacks. 
Then the second question that you're asking, the fear factor, uh, I think if yesterday's attack was uh, much more uh, bloodier and was targeting soft target uh, in, in a way, in a fashion that it was in November 2015, I, I would put to you that it would put more fear into the minds of people and it could uh, translate into a, a better sc score for uh, François Fillon and uh, Marine Le Pen. Uh, I think that because of yesterday modus operandi and target, uh, this will have a limited impact on the voters on Sunday. Well, talking about the far-right French presidential candidate Marine Le Pen, she says war has been declared on France. Uh, she's calling for a wide range of measures which would take the French nation perhaps in a different direction. Border checks to be reinstated, the country to expose, she says. Je lui demande solennellement. We have to get rid of the Schengen zone. We have to fortify our borders and combat those who are our enemies. We have to accelerate measures to strip people who are terrorists or suspected terrorists of their nationality. We have to recruit 50,000 more police officers. We have to reinforce international cooperation, military cooperation, and make sure all our resources are mobilized against these terrorists because we're talking about war here. And the French Conservative candidate Francois Fillon also talking about building walls, arguing security needs to be the top priority for the next president. Some, it would seem, haven't actually taken stock of the evil which is confronting us, and I am determined to do that with an iron fist. My top priority would be that it is the real priority of the next five years that we will be inflexibly determined and we will be absolutely resolute. We have to rearm, re-equip the security forces and military, but also strengthen ideologically and culturally because Islam is a challenge to our very culture and values. All right, I can see, Natalie, you're shaking your head in disagreement. Let me give you a chance to come in on this. Well, you know, listening to Marine Le Pen, and we don't recognize our country. We, we don't want any, any kind of this uh, politic. And then I have to underline something which is really important, and that people and public have to know, is when we try to implement some new regulation against terrorism, or uh, the passenger name record, PNR, or any kind of tool, um, all the deputy and senators from the National Front never vote a single measure against terrorism. They are against everything. And now they are yelling to get and, and, and collect ballot. And at the same time, when they sit in the parliament, including the European parliament, they don't vote anything. So, you know, it, it's a kind of, they, they, they just cheat and they just uh, surf on the web of fear and Islamophobia. And anything which is, is low like that will, will help them to collect ballot. And it's exactly less, of course. The same thing for François Fillon, who is also using this uh, um, file, um, which is the uh, Islamophobia or organization of Islam or anything linked with Islam, to try to collect ballot and, and, and surf on the wave of fear. And it's, it's, it's really unfair and it's not good for the French society. All right, Jacques there, the, the fear of Muslims, the fear of open borders, fear of the EU. You listen to some of the statements coming out of uh, Francois Fillon and Marine Le Pen, and it sounds like the calls for France to almost close up on itself are getting louder, are they? Uh, they're getting louder from some camps. Obviously, on the part of François Fillon and Marine Le Pen, is because they're, they're in a state of despair. They think that maybe this election, they're going to lose this election. So they're ready to ride or to surf on any issue that could help them to, s to provoke a state of fear in the population. I think they're exploiting it. And, well, I understand, if you look at the facts, you know that there's not been anything in France happening, any concerted attack in France since July 2016. We know that the security services have been completely reorganized and are now more efficient and have foiled many attempts, as I mentioned earlier, the last one in, uh, in Marseille. And when you talk about closing the borders, let's not forget that many of these attacks have been carried out by French nationals who did not cross border. And actually, and when you talk about Europe, uh, not you know closing the borders, 
it means you would also lose your connections with other European intelligence services, maybe. And that has been a key factor in falling some uh, attacks, such as the, the one uh, which led to the arrest of the two people in Marseille, that the information came from uh, British intelligence. Yesterday, there was information coming from Belgian police to let France know that the, some uh, one suspect was meant to be going to Paris. As it turned out, it was not quite right. But there's a funny thing is that the Daesh statement mentioned uh, Belgian uh, terrorist uh, 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 while uh, it was uh, actually a Frenchman. Then the other measure uh, consisting in arresting all the people who have been uh, Fish, fiché, we say, who have been recorded, who have been spotted as a potentially radical, to arrest them, judge them. Sometimes Marine Le Pen will put them in jail. That would be totally counterproductive because actually it's through surveillance of these suspects that uh, the police and the security services have been able to okay. fight. The terrorist you, you've raised a bunch of, of good points there, Jacques. Let efficiency. me, if I may, take them to Olivia. So, so far we know that, for example, in this most recent attack, the suspect is a French national. Would clamping down on immigration, would uh, somehow withdrawing from the EU, uh, would any of those sorts of measures have prevented an attack like this? The one from yesterday, definitely not. I mean, uh, as uh, one of your guests mentioned, 95% uh, of the attacks in France uh, were perpetrated by Frenchmen. Uh, the only two cases we had is uh, those uh, Syrians that came uh, at the, the Stade de France and, uh, and passed at, uh, as refugees. Uh, uh, and the closing of borders, uh, I, I think, will not have any impact. I mean, the, the main issue here is to get the intelligence uh, from anyone that is close to the circle. So it means you know, penetration of networks, getting information from the communities, uh, getting Olivia, information from other countries. Olivia, what about rounding like people case. up, uh, as Marine Le Pen has advocated, the, the sorts of, as Jacques uh, termed them there, the fishy characters, round them up and put them in jail. Does that help a security situation or is that counterproductive? That would not help. I mean, she talked about deporting the, the foreign uh, uh, people that are on this list. Uh, I su suggest that m most of them are, are Frenchmen, uh, and, and as I said, the, it has to be done, you know, with a with a velvet glove. And the way to do it is to get more than than often uh, intelligence. I think that w what would be very important is to uh, get people that are uh, close to potential terrorists to come forward and to feel confident to speak to the police, to know that, you know. As a good citizen, uh, protecting one's own when it comes to violence is not the way to go. Uh, Natalie, is this really a crucial moment, perhaps, in, in the choice or the struggle, however you want to see it, between globalization and popularism? Well, but just let, let, let me tell you something. First of all, we have to act. Uh, when I start to work on the um, uh, foreign fighters, we had 2,000 people on the verge of radicalization in France. Now we are there are more than 14,000 people on the verge of radicalization. And I have to tell you something, and that is a fact. 40% of them are convert from Christian into Muslim for the sake of radicalization and fighting and, and uh, terrorism. So to, it, it, it's a question which is very important. It's a French national, sometimes convert. Then uh, regarding the, the way that we have to solve that, we have to do it under uh, the judge. Uh, power, the judiciary power. There is no way that we will implement in this country a Patriot Act. We don't want anything. We have our state of law, we are now under a state of emergency, and we don't want anything close to the Patriot Act. That is clear. Now, to answer your question, uh, we are in a globalization and we have to do that. But what we have to do is build, rebuild a citizen link between the citizens. You cannot stigmatize a Muslim all the time and expect them not to go back to communitarism. We have a real problem in this French society. The French society is hurt. The French society is scary. The French society is under an economic pressure. And so we have some very, very deep problem. And it's not by pushing and pushing and pushing more um, um, criminal regulation 
and, and more crazy uh, proposals that we will solve the problem. It's all the contrary. All right. Well, talking about measured responses, centrist Emmanuel Macron agreed security is a top priority, but advocates a more considered response. Que vous avez à faire dimanche prochain doit être un choix d'avenir. The choice you need to make this Sunday is a choice for the future. Do not give in to fear, to division, intimidation and bullying. Our generation must meet that challenge by rallying together and building a new reality around a progressive project. We have to have a mechanism that protects us from terrorism and we need to transform our society through education, culture and work. I know the French people are not frightened. Jacques, despite that sort of call, the rise of Mélenchon as a candidate has left some people predicting that the second round is going to look like Le Pen on one hand and uh, Mélenchon on the other. Is France heading towards extremes? I don't believe that. No, I don't believe that at all. I think, yes, Mélenchon has been uh, going up in the polls. There's some degree of uh, resentment in the population. Some people are very angry. But uh, I, for one, uh, can tell you that the second round will not be Mélenchon against Le Pen. And I can also, if I want to say, I can affirm that Le Pen will not be the next president of France. Obviously, the terrorists are voting for Le Pen or maybe Fillon. By doing this act yesterday, they wanted to create divisions in French society, which would have, they would have wanted to push the government to forget the future government or the, or the candidates, to forget all about our democratic principles. They wanted to actually increase, to make uh, Islamophobia stronger in the country in order to motivate uh, Muslims into jihad because they would then be discriminated against even more than they already are. So it's quite clear that if one is definitely interested in a peaceful, successful France, it cannot be based on the politics of fear. And that's why I think uh, Emmanuel Macron is right to remind people that let's keep calm. We've had worse events than that. One of the great things about France, one thing that has reassured me, is how uh, calmly the population has reacted right. to the Charlie Hebdo and the Bataclan attacks. We've seen recently an indicator showing that tolerance of other races, of Islam has increased in France, and racism has gone down in the last couple of okay. years. And yeah. I think that's a credit to the current government, who played a big part in keeping things calm. All right, let me, I think we've got a couple of minutes left, so I'm going to give one minute to uh, Nathalie before we uh, have a final minute with Olivia. Nevertheless, Natalie, how unprecedented is it that we're even talking about a scenario perhaps in which the two major parties in French politics may not, in the reading of some people, even be in the second round of voting, that we may be talking about France putting about out of the EU, that we may be talking about a realignment of relations with Russia and so on and so on? Well, I think that for the first time in history, we need more fortune tellers and political uh, analysis because we, we really don't know. But what is for sure is that the uh, political party, the way that the political life is organized in France is, right. is, is totally dead. And I think that the fact uh, for the major party to organize primary, despite the fact that it's not our culture, cultural right. matter to do, uh, brought us where we are means okay. um, in unpredictable time. Okay, I think we've got only about 30 seconds left. So, Olivia, given everything I just asked to Natalie there, is the European security map also at stake in this uh, French election? Uh, no, not, uh, not, uh, not really. I mean, uh, at this point, uh, cooperation has gone up uh, between European countries. So, and, you know, even uh, Britain has helped. And I think it's... Uh, it's very telling that even with Brexit, uh, I think right. the cooperation between, for instance, the UK and France will, will continue. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Let's thank all of our guests, Olivia Guita, Jacques Reland, and Nathalie Goulet. And thank you too for watching. You can see the show again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, head over to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle there is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Sami Zaydan, and the whole team here for now, it's goodbye.